I can hardly believe it, but it's been three years since I first reviewed the Tika T3X Lite. I can hardly believe this channel's that old, but a lot has changed. And so today, we're reviewing the Tika T3X Lite in 2023 versus, well, everything. All the rifles. Let's see right. how it does. Come along, little guys. Got to do a little accuracy testing. See how you hold up against the Tika. Jim, you can't review <laughs> all of those. Yes, it, we might be out at the shooting range for kind of a long time today, so kind of prepare That's accordingly. You. You're sick, and you chose to do the biggest. The people video. need their videos. <laughs> this is one of those sequences where we pretend that I just pulled up to the range, and I just magically have all the guns set out. But let me tell you a little bit about the Tika T3X Lite and why this gun is so incredibly popular. It's probably the top selling hunting rifle in the United States, maybe except for the Ruger American. This thing is priced well. You can usually find a Tika T3X Lite like this one for $750, $800, and it punches above that price point, especially because of right here. This is the story of the Ruger American. The action is excellent. It really feels like you're working with a custom $1,200 action. The feeding is super reliable, and then you go to shoot it, and I've had excellent accuracy results, which we are about to test here, and it weighs nothing. So for the backcountry hunter, or just somebody who wants a convenient rifle to take around, it's tough to beat the Tika T3X Lite. But since I recorded that original review, a lot has changed in the industry and not a lot has changed on the typical T Tika T3X Lite. And so what is it like compared to all the rest? First, let's shoot this thing and show a couple unique features of it. I feel like one of the things that's glossed over more than anything else in reviews is a gun that performs well otherwise, but can't feed. Feeding on the Tika, I have never, ever had a hang up on my Tika. And there are a few reasons why. It's using a polymer magazine and a polymer mag catch, which frankly, I've had lots of issues with that on other brands, but this one works really well. You push that and I mean, it shoots that thing out with some gusto. It's like a handgun mag coming out. Uh, it, I bet we could go for distance on this thing. Let's see what we can do. Uh, yeah, good two inches. All right. In here, the second reason that this feeds so well is it has a ginormous feed ramp. So the feed ramp is that angled portion coming down from the chamber there from the magazine feeding up. So it grabs the top of that case and is just pushing it, angling it up into the chamber. Because it has such a long feed ramp right there, it really helps the feeding. So the test that I've started to put all of the rifles through that I review is I take 20 shots, I put them in the magazine, and I just feed them one after the next to make sure that we can feed 100%. Frankly, I would say of rifles in kind of this price point, it's probably only 25% of the rifles that can do that test and go all the way through 20 shots and never have a single hang up. This one has no issue whatsoever. Probably the most similar rifle to the Tika T3X Lite is this Bagara B14 Hunter. Now, to be clear, I really like this gun. There's a lot about it, but I wouldn't say that the feeding is 100%. I would say it's 95. So let's see how it does. Ah, there we go. Generally, I have pretty good feeding with the Bagara, but because it has a little bit higher of an ejection path, this, the cartridge that was ejected did hit against the scope ring and kept it from feeding. Again, the Bagara is near the top of the heap in this kind of category, and even it can't stand up to the Tika in terms of feeding. The action on the Tika is just so dialed. When you move that bolt, you absolutely 100% know the old cartridge is coming out and the new one is going in. It's just such a smooth action. It's really the only 
action on any rifle under $2,000 that I would say it really does feel absolutely the equivalent of a custom level action that you'd put in a custom rifle. So triggers. You can get a gun that is accurate as you want it to be, but if you don't have a good trigger, I just find that it can open up my groups pretty significantly. That really is the biggest problem in the Browning X-Bolt series. I also would say the trigger is an issue in the Ruger Americans. I reviewed the Ruger American Go Wild pretty recently on this channel. It's an awesome gun, especially for the price point. But the trigger quality, you have a little blade on the trigger, uh, which is fine, but it's just a little bit weird. But when you pull that trigger, you definitely notice, can you see the movement there of the blade? You see a little and then it finally goes off. The Winchester XPR has a decent trigger, although pretty heavy, but there's no creep in it. It's a very heavy trigger, same as the Mauser M18. And there is quite a bit of after travel after, the, after it breaks. Tika really hits it out of the park with that trigger. It's just, it feels like a more expensive trigger than it really is when you shoot the, the Tika. It just, it feels light. There's a perfect break. There's a good bit of over travel, but honestly, I don't care as much about the over travel as much as the pre-travel and the kind of creep we have before it hits to that wall. The Tika's trigger makes you look like a better shooter than you are. All right, now the fun part. I wanna show you the accuracy of the Tika T3X. One thing that I like is it generally shoots a lot of ammo well. This one happens to be chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. We're gonna shoot some of my hand loads, but these hand loads are not tuned to this gun. Actually, these are my hand loads that I usually use for my SIG Cross, and let's see what kind of group we can get out of it. I probably don't have the best showcase here for the accuracy of the Tika T3X. We're shooting at 200 yards, so that's gonna double the size of the group from what you're normally seeing. And again, it's not shooting a load that's really tuned for it. I've found that the Tika T3X Lite, its favorite ammo is the Hornady Precision Hunter. It also shoots Hornady Match really well. In our original review when we were using those, I wasn't able to find any today. But using those, we were very reliably about 0.8 MOA. And that's really all that I could ask for, especially out of a rifle in this price point. But I'll show you the group here. We're at about 3.8 inches, again, at 200 yards. So that's about one and a half MOA. So overall, I definitely would put the Tika T3X Lite in that probably top third of accuracy of all the hunting rifles that I have reviewed. But we gotta stop kind of gushing on the Tika. We gotta get into some of the cons to be aware of. The biggest con, bar none, on the Tika T3X Lite is the stock itself. Look at it in relation to reviewing some other similar rifles. So I would say the stock quality, it's, you know, it's flimsy plastic. And you can see right here where the barrel we should have a free float here. So there's no space, there's a gap between the barrel and the plastic. The theory being that when we shoot, we don't want recoil or using a bipod to cause this stock to move and sometime touch the barrel and some not. So it messes off the harmonics. But you can already see on the bottom, it's much closer, in fact, already touching on the bottom, but free floated here. And that's really the problem with any of these plastic stocks. They try to give a little tiny little free float so that it looks nice, but you really need a giant gap to have a truly free floated rifle. But that's common on other rifles. You look at a Winchester XPR and it's really the same thing. It's a very cheap plastic hollow sounding gun. In fact, Tika means woodpecker in Finnish, but also in that same price point, like a Bagara B14 Hunter has a much more rigid stock. It, it feels like a much just tougher, higher level of stock. The Tika really cheaps out on the stock. Now I will point out that the T3X comes in a million, a million different flavors. And they do have different stocks that you can select for it. But if you're getting the stock, most popular T3X Lite, 
the stock is the weak point. And then just for reference, if you go to Germany and you look at like a Mauser M18 that's really getting a lot more popular in the United States, they at least use that plastic stock to have some features. Cause look, you can store some snacks in there. Anytime you want gum, boom. In your rifle stock, buddy. The other issue is just the innovation in the stocks. If you look at your traditional stock lines, it's intended for a standing shot. It's got rounding up here, a grip as if you're always going to be holding there. It's kind of swept back here and not a more forward pistol grip that could give you a great purchase on the trigger. But I will say that one advantage here is they have interchangeable pistol grips on the Tika. And so for 35 bucks, you can get a much more uh, vertical pistol grip so that you aren't coming at the trigger from a 45 degree angle like this. It kicks your hand forward so you can pull it at a 90 degree angle. But all those traditional stocks just can't compete with some companies that are really innovating in the space. And so if we look at the next level up, something like a Sig Cross, or other chassis rifles, Bagara has the MG Lite, this is the Fierce Mountain Reaper. You get a folding stock, which is a huge benefit. Look how much shorter that is to go in your backpack when you're going hunting, even with a suppressor, it's a short little package, and then you can just deploy it at the push of a button. So something like that is awesome. Plus you get an adjustable riser, you get your Arca, everything you could possibly want on there. So I would love to see a lot of these rifles in this kind of price point, $800 to $1,200, start to play with some innovation in the stock so that we can get uh, more features and make us shoot better. Weight is obviously a big deal on the Tikas, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. But first, I wanna point you to Backfire Plus. Backfire Plus is something we just started a few weeks ago. I have multiple courses on there. How to scope a rifle is an important one here. You'll see on this, I have my bubble level, have a label here that's very important. I'll show you in the course. Selecting the rings and getting it scoped perfectly. I trust no one to scope my rifles. And so in that course, I'm able to show you everything that I'm not allowed to show any gun modification on YouTube. So check it out at Backfire Plus. Just Google it, you'll see Backfire Plus. It's a really good price, especially because you're getting all the courses that I have on there now, plus two other major course releases that we'll be adding this year, and you don't have to pay any ex anything extra. It's all there. Plus there's a community, you can talk to me. I'm in there multiple times a day answering questions and talking with people. You'll get the Backfire Mancast, which is the new podcast that me and behind the camera, Emily, say hi, Emily. Hi. <laughs> are doing uh, for the people on Backfire Plus. We're really putting everything we have into it. So check it out at Backfire Plus. But let's get into weight. The Tika T3X, this super light variant, weighs 5.9 pounds. That is incredibly light. It's also really good to see because in general, the European rifle manufacturers are just, they're producing heavier guns. The number two issue is right there. It doesn't come with a threaded muzzle in this most common variant. The most common variant that you're gonna see in stores doesn't come with a threaded muzzle. It's so frustrating. In fact, I talked to some reps at Tika about that recently. I would love to see them threading muzzles. In order to do that, there may not be enough material here. They may have to choose a heavier contour of a barrel and they can flute it down to cut some of the weight, but so they have enough belling up here so that they can have uh, threads for a suppressor, threaded 5.8's 24. So that's something I would love to see them add. The other thing is their recoil pad is very bad. It's probably the worst in the industry. It's extremely stiff and it's designed to increase muzzle flip. I do notice a lot more muzzle flip when you pull the trigger of that muzzle just kind of flipping up. And it's because it's kind of angled down like this, it's, it's just like it's intentionally pushing up, which is the opposite of what you would want. A well-designed recoil pad wants you to push down that barrel. And so I don't love their implementation of recoil pad. Good thing is that's easy to change out. Look, you guys, the Tika T3X Lite is almost unbeatable. It's an extremely good gun, and there are so many different stocks, uh, prefit barrels, other things that you can do to it over time. That's why I talk about Tika so much on this channel. They are 
awesome. Thanks for joining me on this video. See you in the next one.